Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Lizon, helping you live naturally in an unnatural world. Who are you? I'm you 20 years ago. What are you doing here? I'm here to fix your mistakes and make sure that you share with people all the vital health research out there that shows why people over 50 need to be using oh, near infrared sauna. Okay, that makes sense. Welcome to part two of our series on why you should be using near infrared saunas when you're over 50. Many of you might not know that when I was 33, I actually suffered a mild heart attack from an infection. It really woke me up. Statistically, over 25% of the deaths in 2018 were from cardiovascular disease. It is a big problem. To me, in my opinion, it is a huge disconnect in society that people don't understand how immensely valuable saunas and near-infrared saunas in particular can be for cardiovascular disease. There's this fear out there that saunas and heating the body is bad for cardiovascular disease and many doctors still don't tell people to do near-infrared saunas. They don't even recommend saunas at all. In the literature, that is not the case. The literature is abundantly clear that saunas are fantastic for cardiovascular disease. So today, I'm gonna to go through a countdown on the top 10 reasons or things that saunas can help you with when it comes to your cardiovascular disease. And stay tuned till the end, because at the end, I'll go through the select few who really shouldn't use saunas. Let's get started, number 10. Near-infrared saunas can improve the lipid profile in people. That is a huge benefit if you can influence the LDLs and the HDLs. Number nine, saunas can mimic exercise. If you think about it, a sauna heats up the body, you get a good sweat going, you get the blood flow going. It's a really good way to get a lot of the benefits of exercise without doing the exercise. And it's not a replacement for exercise, but a lot of you that are watching this video over 50 can't or won't exercise because you're either overweight, obese, knee pain, back pain, whatever it is. So this is a way that you can get many of the benefits of exercise without actually doing it. Number eight, there is a reduced risk of stroke. 61% less chance of having a stroke when you do saunas five to seven times per week. 61% less. This was over a longitudinal study. I think it was over a 15 or even a 20 year period that showed a massive reduction in the number of strokes. Number seven is that near-infrared saunas can be used for stroke rehab. Now, the photobiomodulation component, the light component of the sauna is what helps here. Yes, blood flow and the heat in the sauna can help, but the photobiomodulation is used extensively for stroke rehabilitation. So using a near-infrared sauna will help with stroke rehab. You probably should get yourself an LED panel so you can increase your dose, but it will help when you use a near-infrared sauna. Number six is high blood pressure. Multiple studies that look at photobiomodulation show that it can reduce high blood pressure. Multiple studies that look at just the heat of the sauna also show that it can reduce blood pressure. It helps with the arterial stiffness you're sort of pumping the arteries, it helps with the endothelial lining, it reduces the stiffness which reduces the blood pressure. Number five is that it releases nitric oxide, both the heat and the photobiomodulation, the light component, increase the production of nitric oxide. And this is a great benefit for people that have cardiovascular disease because it increases the circulation. You get far better blood flow. It has an effect very similar to nitroglycerin, which makes sense. We're talking about nitric oxide, nitroglycerin. It works really well. And when you use the sauna regularly, you can get a lot of benefits with your circulation, including microcirculation. Number four is it improves your vascular endothelial function. What this means is that it actually improves the endothelial lining in your blood vessels it reduces the stiffness and it really helps with your coronary arteries. It is a big benefit to using your infrared saunas. Number three is one of my favorites. You increase your heart rate variability or HRV for short. This is a huge benefit. 
HRV deserves a video all on its own, but essentially understand that it's a measurement of the stress within your body. So the higher that is, the less stress in your body. That's really important with cardiovascular disease because when you are tense and stressed, things like blood pressure will go up. When you're relaxed, good things happen. One of the really good things that happens when you have less stress in the body is cholesterol will actually lower. So HRV, very important in managing stress. And a sauna will actually decrease your stress response by at least 38% and up to 50% from one single session. The number two reason why you need to use a sauna when you're over 50 for cardiovascular disease is you've got a 48% lower risk of death from all cardiovascular causes, 48%. This is on, uh, again, I'm not sure if it's a 15 or a 20 year longitudinal study, but they know that when you sauna regularly, regularly is defined as five to seven times per week, your risk of cardiovascular disease and death is dramatically reduced, halved basically. And the number one reason to use saunas for cardiovascular disease is it reduces inflammation. This is a huge benefit for all coronary heart disease, all cardiovascular disease. You reduce your inflammation and the healing can really dramatically improve. The other benefit though is the photobiomodulation, which is what essentially contributes to the reduced inflammation, speeds up all healing. It really helps with healing of wounds and damage. So you put the two together and you've got a wonderful combination. So I really hope that you can see the massive benefits that you get when you use a near-infrared sauna for cardiovascular disease. Now, all of those points that I've already put up there, I will put the references for those, the medical journal references for those in the description if you're watching this on YouTube. Now, there are a couple of scenarios where people should not sauna. Number one is alcohol and saunas don't mix. When you look at the deaths that have occurred when you use a sauna, more than half, way more than half, have involved alcohol. You drink, you don't sauna. Now, there are other people that should not sauna, and what I'm going to do is write it out for you so that you can pause the video and have a look and see if you fall into that category. Now, of course, I'm not offering up medical advice. So anyone that has cardiovascular disease really should check with their medical doctors. But keep in mind, most medical doctors are not up to date with the actual literature. So you may want to look at the references that I've provided and either get a copy of those or bring them to your GP if you are in doubt. There's always more to learn about near-infrared saunas. So if you've enjoyed this part two of our series, definitely hit the subscribe button or like button, whatever sort of you know works for you. If that's really not your thing, then again, you can go onto our website at nirsauna.com.au, go to the Learning Center, and you will find all kinds of information there where you can learn at your own sort of speed and pace but I think you'll find that the overall benefits are tremendous and the risk is low. If you've got cardiovascular disease, I really think this is something that you should look into quite significantly. I'm Dr. Todd Lison. Until next time, keep well.